Leaders make an offering so that the Levites can labor. The Levites are dedicated and cleansed for their labor. An age range is declared for service in the tabernacle. Israel celebrates their second Passover. The cloud, the fire, Jesus faces Pilate, takes the place of Barabbas as mocked, crucified, killed, and buried in a borrowed tomb. Today on 3 in 1, as we consider Numbers chapter 7 through 9 and Mark chapter 15. The only way that I can give my best to this, to this labor of love, is if the leaders and laborers in our community willingly give to support this ministry. And they do. Each week we receive an offering. We do not pass a plate. We only have boxes around the sanctuary. And the leaders, the laborers, willingly give without any compulsion. They find those boxes and they give generously to the Lord's work. Now, for years, as the church was being planted, I labored full-time in a tent-making position in addition to laboring full-time in the ministry, necessary at the time because of limited resources. Now, somehow we survived, and on the other side with a few more gray hairs, I am so thankful, so thankful for the leaders and laborers in our ministry that so faithfully give to the ministry here so that we can continue to give our best to this, our labor, our labor of love, the Lord's work. Well, that's exactly what you read about in Numbers chapter 7 today. The leaders came willingly to give so that the Levites could completely focus on the Lord's work, their labor of love, the work of ministering in the tabernacle. Now, it must have been a very moving scene as the leaders approached the tabernacle ready to sacrifice to support the Lord's work. Even Moses stopped and stared until the Lord spoke and told him to receive this free will offering so that the Levites could labor, so that the Levites could give their complete focus, their best, to their labor of love, the Lord's work in the tabernacle. Listen, verse 4. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Accept these from them, that they may be used in doing the work of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall give them to the Levites, to every man according to his service. Such a beautiful, symbiotic service. The leaders give The Levites labor, the work of the Lord is accomplished, God is glorified, and all of the people are blessed. Even more able, every one, to give their best to their particular labor of love given to them by the Lord. So thankful, so grateful. So in Numbers chapter 8, the Levites are cleansed and dedicated, readied for service, another significant ceremony, full of symbolism. We have a ceremony of sorts, full of symbolism, whenever we bring in another minister to minister on staff here at Calvary Chapel. We give them a Bible, a shepherd's staff, a gift certificate for a suit, and a toilet plunger. Seriously, we do. (laughs) Each symbolic and each literal tools for service. See, a pastor, a minister, a servant, set apart specifically to serve those who were bought with the blood of Christ, will need to know the word. And they must have a shepherd's heart. And they will need a suit to serve in weddings and funerals. And from time to time, they will need to roll up their sleeves, the sleeves on that suit, and use that plunger to serve the saints. Again, seriously, just this past Sunday, an assisting pastor on our staff was found serving Jesus and serving his people by fixing up a stop toilet. Following his Lord's example of willingly taking the place of a servant, willingly taking the place of a slave. Again, so thankful so grateful. Now, before we leave Numbers chapter 8, I want us to notice something at the end of the chapter. In verse 23, it says this, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This is what pertains to the Levites. From 25 years old and above, one may enter to perform service in the work of the tabernacle of meeting. And at the age of 50 years, they must cease performing this work and shall work no more. They may minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of meeting to attend to needs, but they themselves shall do no work. Thus you shall do to the Levites regarding their duties. I was in a financial Bible study once, and the question was asked about retirement. Is retirement ever mentioned in the scriptures? Well, here is about as close as you get, but it's a bit different, isn't it? The law says that men can minister in the tabernacle of meeting from age 25 to age 50, and then after that they can serve alongside the younger men, but cannot minister directly in the tabernacle of meeting. This ministers to me as a minister greatly. For at my age I am painfully aware of how many men have fallen in the ministry or quit the ministry, and I wonder if the number of men would have been the same, if there had been more mentors, 
more older men serving alongside the younger men in ministry, making them aware of the pitfalls, making them aware of the dangers, holding up their arms when they are discouraged and want to quit, speaking the tough truths when they want to wander into areas they have no business being in. I wonder, I wonder if instead of preaching until you drop dead in the pulpit, I wonder if there could have been a better ministry if at some point men would choose to mentor instead of continuing to be the senior minister. I have been directly blessed by many mentors like this, and we are here today because of their ministry in my life, encouraging me, rebuking me, speaking the truth to me in love, an invaluable ministry, older ministers mentoring younger ministers. So great to see this in the scriptures. Okay, now on to Numbers chapter 9 where Israel celebrates their second Passover, which must have been extremely meaningful for those who still have the events of the Exodus burned fresh into their memories. Celebrating their second Passover by the light of the burning pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud by day. A daily reminder that the Lord is with them and that the Lord is leading them through the wilderness. No matter what, when that pillar moved day or night, they too packed up and moved all 19,000 pounds of the tabernacle, all two to four million people and all of their belongings, traveling through the wilderness in a shape of a cross, surrounding the tabernacle, led miraculously by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Man, let your mind paint that picture. Can you see? Can you hear that pillar of fire? Crackling, thundering, illuminating the evening. Can you see millions of tents, millions of people camped in the shape of a cross around the tabernacle? Millions of people ready to move at a moment's notice, ready to move at the Lord's command, at the Lord's leading. We have a pillar of cloud, a, a pillar of fire of sorts, in the Word. When the Word says move, we move. Well, we're supposed to move anyway. See, the people of Israel had a choice to keep in step with the Lord's leading or, like sheep prone to wander, to do it on their own, to go their own way. Well, alone in the wilderness doesn't sound like the most desirable place to be. Besides, those who continued to follow the miraculous leading of the Lord continued to be miraculously provided for by the Lord as well. And the same applies to us. We could wander off too into the wilderness on our own, but why? Why would we want to? Wouldn't we rather want to keep in step with the Lord? Remaining in his love, remaining under his protection, remaining receiving his provision for our family's sake, for the glory of God's sake. So yes, we too are ready to move at a moment's notice when the word says move. Now, on to our New Testament reading from the word in Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, a full chapter. Jesus faces Pilate, takes the place of Barabbas, is mocked, crucified, killed, and buried in a borrowed tomb. Pilate, concerned only with satisfying the people, acquiescing to their anger, fueled by envy, and delivers Jesus up to being beaten, releasing a murderer named Barabbas instead. So Jesus most literally died a substitutionary death for a murderer named Barabbas and a murderer named Dominic. For my sin of harboring hatred in my heart is no less heinous than that of Barabbas. And it was my sin that yelled louder than the crowd that day, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Mocked, crucified, numbered with the transgressors, mocked by the Roman soldiers, mocked by the religious rulers, mocked by the people passing by. Jesus was even mocked by the others who were being crucified around him. Verse 32 says, even those who were crucified with him reviled him. That had to have been the most difficult. A, a man being mocked in the very offering that would provide the very forgiveness for their very sin that they were committing at that moment. That had to have been the most difficult for a man who, being God as well, could have, if he wanted to, ended it all with a thought. But he didn't want to end it all. He wanted to give his all for us, to pay our price, to pay our penalty. He endured for the joy that was set before him and willingly laid his life down for you, for me, willingly being forsaken by his Father, 
for you, for me. We have no idea the horror of that. My Jesus, courageously facing Pilate, mocked, crucified, killed, and buried in a borrowed tomb. A borrowed tomb, for he wouldn't need it long. And we'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode. Now, before we go, what ministered to you the most today? I so enjoyed hearing from you the last time I asked. So if you feel so inclined to share something good with someone who has shared the word with you, then please do. I would love to hear from you. Galatians 6, 6 says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. You can reach me at info at 3n1.org. Email me something good, a good word from the word, or email me if you need ministry. We are here to serve you, to help introduce you to Jesus, and ultimately to help you to walk with him, enjoying the never-ending adventure of knowing him.